In this video, we're going to be teaching you everything you need to know to get started on Mark's Hunter in Cata Classic. You're going to learn the best race, talents, glyphs, gear, professions, and of course macros to get you instantly ahead of the competition. And don't worry, we're also going to teach you exactly what pets you'll need in your stable if you're looking to PvP. Okay, so before we start, if you want a fresh UI for Kata using our brand new SkillCapped add-on, be sure to check out our updated classic site at SkillCapped.com. We've got literally everything you need to make sure you don't fall behind in the latest expansion, including specialized guides at your fingertips from Rank 1 players, which will teach you exactly what you need to master your class. From maximizing damage to mastering CC and more, everything is covered and while everyone else is going to be slowly figuring everything out themselves, you can skip this process with SkillCapped, quickly putting you ahead of the competition. So much so, in fact, that we literally guarantee you'll gain at least 400 rating when actively using our service. So join us today using the exclusive discount link in the description below. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Let's kick things off at the character select screen where it's time to choose your race. Now, without a doubt, the best overall race for Hunter and Cataclysm is human due to its active racial called Will to Survive, which essentially acts as a PvP trinket. Now, this gives humans the ability to play with double damage trinkets, which gives them even more burst damage, especially in later seasons when PvE gear becomes more powerful. Now, while Horde is overall less desirable, Orc is definitely your best bet, as the 15% stun reduction is good into Rogues, Mages, and Feral Druids, and the increased attack power with Blood Fury combined with some extra pet damage will increase your overall throughput. Overall, though, nothing can really compare to Human, especially in the last season of the expansion, where PvE trinkets are absolutely just broken. So moving on, talents work slightly differently in Cataclysm, so let's break down everything you need to know. First up, you're gonna need to spend 31 points into the Marksmanship tree before putting any points in BM or Survival. What you see on screen now is the standard build for Season 9, which has a little bit of flexibility, which we're gonna cover here in a moment. Marks is known for its front-loaded high burst damage, which is possible with talents like Careful Aim, which allows aimed shot to have an almost guaranteed crit chance on high HP targets. And then even piercing shots, which adds bonus dot as a percentage of your critical hits. This build also includes some defensive perks on the survival tree, including more overall stamina, a root effect tied into snake trap, and then post haste, which combined with entrapment gives you more mobility, especially against melee. Now, if you really want to take your mobility a step further, you could remove two points in one with nature on the BM tree into survival tactics on the survival tree for an even shorter cooldown on disengage. There are also two points on the main tree, which you can swap around as well. Here we've put resistance is futile as a default pick, since kill command is a fairly useful pet ability that can be used on targets out of LOS. But if you wanted to, you could put these two points into Termination, which simply gives you six focus when Steady or Cobra Shot is used on low HP targets. The only problem with this talent is that the target is going to be in Kill Shot range anyway, so it can be a bit useless at times. Along with talents, the Glyph system has changed slightly in Cataclysm. Now you'll have three additional Prime Glyph slots on top of Major and Minor. For Marx Hunter, these won't ever change and will be Glyph of Chimera Shot for some small CDR on our main ability. Then Glyph of Kill Shot, which allows us to execute back to back if the first one fails. And then finally, Glyph of Arcane Shot for a modest damage increase to one of our filler globals. For major glyphs, there are two you should always play with, including Glyph of Disengage and Master's Call which simply gives you and your teammates more mobility. For your third major glyph, you're gonna have a few options to choose from. As a good general option, you might wanna play with Glyph of Trap Launcher. Although quite boring, it is a good quality of life improvement. As a pure defensive option, you could instead play with Glyph of Raptor Strike, giving you some temporary damage reduction every time this ability is pressed. 
And finally, if you value mobility over anything else, you could play with Glyph of Concussive Shot, which can counter any speed increases from your opponents. As the name suggests, minor glyphs really aren't that impactful, but you're going to want to pick up Feign Death for the minor CDR, and then Glyph of Scare Beast for decreased pushback in the very rare times you're going to cast this ability. For your third slot, just honestly pick whatever you'd like. Okay, so before we continue, we have an exclusive skill cap tip to help you get started in Kata PvP, coming directly from our new classic course. If you played TBC, you're going to know how overpowered stealth detection is, with rogues equipping random items, people re-rolling human to get a slight edge, and countless whispers being thrown out everywhere because openers were just being completely cheesed by a measly plus one stat. Well everyone, now it is our turn, as by simply toggling on track hidden on our minimap, we can drastically increase our stealth detection helping us shut down rogues and ferals openers before they even know what happened to them. And the best thing is by making three simple macros to scatter arena targets one, two, and three, we can spam our scatter shot on the target who's invisible, allowing our scatter to ping them out of stealth as soon as they appear with their pathetic weak stealth on our screen. If you want to learn more tips like these, then check out our brand new class courses at skillcap.com by using the links below. All right, next up, let's go over your best in-slot gear for Season 9, starting with your stat priority. Ideally, you're going to want as much agility as possible while hitting some key breakpoints, including at least 5% hit. Then you're going to want at least 195 spell penetration, which we'll get with gems. And after this, your goal is to get at least 3,000 resilience, but even more is better since you're going to be the target most games. After this, prioritize Crit as your main secondary, followed by Mastery, and then Haste. Now, despite what you might have heard, most of your best in-slot gear is going to come from PvP in Season 9. Before we show you your best in-slot, be sure to check out our article site after the video for your pre bis gear using the link in the description below. Now, let's take a look at what items you should aim to get as the season progresses. Your main pieces are going to include Vicious Gladiator's Chain Helmet, Shoulders, Chest, gloves and legs, all obtainable through Conquest. Then for your off pieces, you should aim to get the Vicious Cloak of Cruelty, Wrist Guards of Accuracy, Sabatons of Cruelty, and then the Vicious Gladiator's Link of Cruelty for your belt. For your jewelry slots, look to get the Vicious Gladiator's Necklace of Prowess for your neck, then a Vicious Ring of Cruelty, and the Vicious Ring of Accuracy. As far as trinkets are concerned, there are a few options that depend not only on your race. No matter what though, you're going to be playing with the Vicious Gladiator's Badge of Conquest. Then for your second trinket as human, you can play with the Key to the Endless Chamber, which is your only potential PvE item. Or if you don't want to PvE at all, simply use an Insignia proc trinket for your second slot. But as a non-human, you'll also want to wear a PvP trinket with the Vicious Badge for Season 9. Finally, for your weapons, simply use the Vicious Gladiator's Pike as your melee weapon, and then Vicious Gladiator's Longbow as your ranged weapon. Now, in the rare chance you're playing Dwarf, do be sure to buy a gun instead. When it comes to reforging, your goal is to stick to your caps and reforge any secondary stats to hit if you're below the 5% cap, prioritizing reforging out of mastery or haste if possible. If you're above the hit cap, then any excess hit should be reforged into crit. With your gear sorted, let's get everything gemmed and enchanted. Your best enchants will not change as the expansion progresses. Your helmet and shoulder enchants are both from PvP and are going to be the Arcanum and Vicious Inscription of Agility. These are both acquired with honor. Your cloak enchant will ideally be the tailoring exclusive Sword Guard Embroidery, but if you're not a tailor, simply use Greater Spell Piercing to get you your spell pin. Then you're going to want Peerless Stats on your chest, Agility on your bracers, Synapse Springs on your gloves if you're an engineer, or Major Agility if you're not. Finally, get Precision on your boots. For your high ticket items, you're going to want Dragon Scale Leg Armor on your legs. Then on your ranged weapon, get the Flintlock's Woodchucker and a Weapon Chain on Melee Weapon. 
Finally, be sure to buy a belt buckle for an extra gym slot. And speaking of which, let's get everything gymmed. For our meta socket, we're going to be using Agile Shadow Spirit Diamond for maximum agility and bonus crit damage. Then in red slots, we're going to want to use Delicate Inferno Rubies. And in blue, we're going to use Stormy Ocean Sapphire in order to get our spell pin. And then in the yellow slots, we're going to want Lucent Ember Topaz. Professions will matter once more in Cataclysm, and there's a few obvious choices to talk about here. Overall, your best profession is Tailoring, which offers the Sword Guard Embroidery Cloak Enchant, granting 1,000 attack power as a proc, which can then be stacked with other damage modifiers in order to do some crazy bursts. Then you could go Engineering for its exclusive Glove Enchant, whose on-use effect can be stacked with other trinket procs. Just do note that it will share a cooldown with on-use trinkets. Tailoring and Engineering are going to be your best overall options, but for some alternative options, you could go either jewel crafting or blacksmithing for more consistent damage. JC offers some exclusive epic gems, while blacksmithing gives you two extra sockets, which will gain more value in the later stages of the expansion, since in Season 11, everyone will have access to epic gems anyway, and having two additional sockets will provide even more stat boosts. Next, let's go over every macro you're going to need to be competitive in PvP. Hunters tend to be macro heavy given the sheer amount of CC, utility, and pet management that's required, but let's start off with some basic focus macros. For silencing shot, scatter shot, and then a focus macro to use your pet ability, and then finally, scare beast. Then you'll want a focus trank shot macro in order to purge a focus target, and then a focus concussive shot to keep players snared. To make it easier to trap, you can make an all-in-one macro to sequence Trap Launcher into Freezing Trap. You could then make Arena 1-2-3 macros for any of your targeted CC too, and we would highly recommend Scatter, Bad Manor, and Silencing Shot. Then you should make a Pet Attack macro that automatically uses Dash in the process. You should also make an iconic Swifty One-Shot macro using your PvP Trinket with Rapid Fire and Roar of Recovery. As a quality of life improvement, you're going to also want to make some macros to weave in and out of your aspects for maximum damage. Here we've made macros to swap you into Aspect of the Hawk when using Aim Shot, Arcane Shot, or Chimera. And you'll want to do the reverse with Steady Shot, swapping you automatically into Aspect of the Fox. Then you should make some utility macros, starting with Roar of Sacrifice, having a macro to use it on yourself and then Party 1 and Party 2. Finally, consider making a simple standalone macro for Bullheaded to make it easier to see on your bars. To wrap up this guide, let's go over all the pets you're going to need for Arena. Your main pet that you'll be using most of the time will be a monkey, which you can tame in Stranglethorn Vale. The signature ability of this pet family is called Bad Manor, which is a magic-based disorient on the stun VR for some reason, but Anyway, your monkey stun can be used to help land traps on enemy healers or as a simple peel. Then you'll want two different types of pets that you'll only use in the starting room for their temporary buffs. This includes any pet in the cat family for its temporary Roar of Courage buff, which you should use when playing with other melee. Otherwise, you'll want to also tame any wolf due to Furious Howl, which grants a temporary crit buff and it's useful for when your partner is a caster or even a DK. Then there's some miscellaneous utility pets you might want, including a spider for their web effect, which can be good into melee cleaves. Additionally, you might want a bird of prey in order to get access to a disarm, which can also be good into melee cleaves. Now, if you really want to be comprehensive, consider picking up a spore bat for its AoE cast speed reduction debuff and then a bear for its AoE physical damage debuff. All of these utility pets are completely optional since you're gonna be using a monkey in Arena most of the time, but can be good to swap in and out of clutch plays. Now, the reason you wanna primarily play with a monkey is not only its stun, but also the fact that it belongs to the Cunning family. And in Cataclysm, different hunter pet families have different talents. On screen now is the best pet build which includes the iconic Roar of Sacrifice as an efficient one-minute cooldown, Bullheaded, 
which is a CC removal trinket and damage reduction cooldown for your pet. And then finally, Roar of Recovery, which acts as an on-demand focus generator. All right, guys, that about wraps it up for this one. Before you go, though, be sure to check out Skill Capped. We are the only service that dares to literally guarantee you're going to climb at least 400 rating when actively using our service. And, uh, well, if you don't, you don't pay. Simple as that. As always, though, we want to thank you all for watching, and we'll see you soon.